Hi folks and welcome to another episode of The Art of Engineering. The revamped test bench. Later in this video I will show you some footage of how this all came about. We're excited to have a much more organised, although you couldn't tell by what you're seeing now, space to be working in. In today's episode we're going to look at some of the things that are happening to my Renaissance rig here. Now tube rigs is my latest obsession and I've just started working with vacuum tubes. I have had a small amount of experience with it in the past. Working offshore as a maritime uh, merchant radio officer, I had a small amount of exposure to valves. I've got to say, I never had to change the finals in a main transmitter, and I was very terrified of the prospect of having to do that. But recently, my TS520 needed new finals in it, and I did the uh, replacement of those tubes and neutralization, all that good stuff. So. We're slowly getting a little bit more confident with working with the stuff, but like I've said, this is not a how-to video. I am not an expert. Proceed with caution at your own risk. Gotta say, I've only been electrocuted a couple of times. That's probably two times too many, but if you speak to any technician, uh, or electrician for that matter, there's very few who have done this for a long time who haven't copped a belt or two, uh, luckily. The two times it's happened to me, it hasn't been fatal, but it can be. So the plan today is to show you some of the things I've done inside this uh, inside this radio, and some of the the little adjustments and whatnot that have happened. And we're also um, going to discuss a uh, VFO that we're building and whatnot, and demonstrate uh, how much power is coming out of it now, and all that good stuff. Now I'm going away for a good number of weeks, so this video is going to be down and dirty. Uh, it's going to be a fairly short video. I just want to get some content out before I disappear. So if you haven't heard from me for uh, a good three or four weeks over the summer break, do not fear I have not given up making videos. I love doing this too much to stop doing that, but uh, it might be a little while before you see another one. Having said that, I'm probably home for another three or four days, so I'm hoping to get at least one more out before I sign off for a little while and go QRT, but not silent key. Anyway, we hope. <laughs> Shouldn't even joke about it. Let's go. Someone's dropped off a whole heap of crappy material, and the plan is to build myself some very rough and ready shelving for the uh, workbench and uh, presently the shack is in even more disarray than normal because uh, I went out kayaking yesterday. This is the world's crappiest brand of tool, the Eozito, but I've got to say, what it uh, lacks in uh, accuracy, it more than makes up for a cheap price, and this is not cutting straight at all now, but uh, we've had it for like quite a while, and it's done a lot of <laughs> Just like to apologise to any carpenters out there who are watching this and grimacing. Here at The Art of Engineering, we love donations. Um, free shelves. And, I mean, this stuff is so solid, I probably won't even need a center support on it. I doubt it can fall forwards, but uh, sorry I'm talking so close to the camera. I'm waiting for my clicking awesome Kogan microphone that's taking 16 months to arrive because I strongly suspect that uh, when you order it, they just order it from China like you would have done in the first place and chuck an another 10 bucks on top, which is really annoying.
So there you have it folks. Just a little bit more storage to bring maybe just a little bit of organization to the chaos. Haven't really organized it properly yet, but uh, that's the shelf made out of stuff from someone's bathroom renovation that they didn't want. Cost? Well, a few hours and uh, zero dollars. Okay folks, we are back on the test bench having a look at uh, some of the modifications that have been made to the Renaissance rig. And you can see we've already added another control here. Now that is a bias adjustment for different crystals or different types of crystals. Um, FT243 worked marvelously well with this type of design because it was designed for older type crystals. Uh, but the HC49s are working in it, but if the bias is not set correctly, you're driving the crystals very hard. You've got that possibility of destroying one, although I haven't managed to destroy one yet. Uh, but uh, I've decided to make an, a, a bias adjustment. What I ended up doing was I put both the FT243 crystal and the HC49 in and I just tested to see uh, where it would oscillate at minimum. And in my case here, I adjusted this pot till I got it down to about 1.3 kilo ohms. So I've put in a 1.3 kilo ohm resistor there as a minimum so it will start up regardless of the type of crystal that I've got um, implemented in the design. The bias adjustment certainly makes quite a bit of difference power output wise and you can drive these FT243 crystals a lot harder and get um, quite a bit more output from the rig. I'll just power up and I'll show you how that all works. Helps if you switch it on. So that's the on off switch for power. Down here you can't see it but uh, there's a transmit switch on the front and the uh, cap adjustments and whatnot. So we'll flick over to transmit and there we go, we needed a bit more bias. And I will zero in but uh, that's close to uh, 3 watts uh, and if I play with the bias I can get it up to 3.5 watts and I'm just listening on the um, I'll just show you well, listening on the OzQRP obviously the uh, bandpass filter is attenuating that greatly um, all of this is happening via a uh, dummy load because these crystals haven't been reground yet they're not in the 40 meter band but as you can see with an ft243 crystal we're up close to over three and a half watts of power so that's all nice um, i will drop in this hc49 which is at 7020 I've got quite a few of these crystals. Care of Victor Kilo 2 November Alpha Papa, Chris. So thank you, Chris. We will pop this one out. This was from John Kirk, a VK4TJ. Previous video, I said thank you. Uh, nice little Christmas present to get. So we'll pop in a um, HC49. Excuse the, uh, the camera movement. We'll just uh, get ourselves set up. I'll get us retuned to 7020. That uh, tone you can hear there is actually this uh, oscillator, which is going to be a uh, variable oscillator for this rig once I work out what I'm doing. But we're getting close. And there you have it. And all those people that say you can't run a, one of these types of rigs on uh, this type of crystal, that's close to four watts. I'm actually getting more output. Now, if I don't want to drive the crystal so hard, uh, I can um, wind it uh, the bias back, and that's going anywhere from four down to two watts. So if I leave it at two and a half watts. So 
So that's sounding, I think, not too bad. And I'm very happy that I, I did that little modification. I would like to cut off this excess pipe, but uh, that's for another time. Uh, I've done lots of other modifications. We might just pop the hood on this, um, kill the power so I don't electrocute myself. And we'll just have a look at some of the other uh, modifications that have occurred to this rig uh, to make it uh, a little bit more um, user friendly for me. So here we have the, um, the tank coil, the 6V6 from China. Uh, that seems to be working all right. Those 2.5 milli Henry chokes, uh, if those of you that watch the channel will know that I did a video on this. This was um, Pete Giuliano's idea of how to make one of these. Uh, if you can't buy one, you can make one. It's a readily available toroid video on my channel in the playlist. So thank you, Pete Giuliano from the Solder Smoke podcast for putting me onto that because I can now wind as many of these as I need when I'm playing with uh, tube circuits. Uh, this is the HC49 crystal uh, socket that I can use. When I'm using the VFO, when I do get it working, I'm going to be able to plug that, uh, that VFO into the rig via this, uh, this socket here, which also doubles as the FT243, as previously mentioned, when we want to plug one of those into the rig. So we've got all bases covered on that front. And like I said, we now can adjust our bias as well to uh, get the best efficiency and maybe wind back the strain on the crystals when we're using them. And on the inside of the rig here, my God, what a mess. So I need to really work on my um, housekeeping and my, I am gonna try and clean up some of this wiring when I'm happy with the design. We've got two air variables, unfortunately, one of my air variables was arcing out and had issues. So we originally had two that were the same. We've got, now got two that are different. They come out of old broadcast uh, receivers. Whenever I see them online at a reasonable price, I grab them and stick them in the junk box. We've got a piezo buzzer for side tone, which works nicely. That's keyed via these relays. I've got two relays here. One of these is going to uh, allow me to put the uh, receiver into standby. Um, and also switch off the divide by two uh, chip on the VFO. So it'll, it'll, it'll quieten the VFO. Um, and uh, we've also got the keying happening via this relay because I did not want um, large voltages. As in the past was quite common practice when you were keying your cathode on the key, on the actual key uh, terminals, quite large and scary voltages. Uh, for a rig like this, it's t it's two, over 200 volts, and I just didn't want that happening. Um, so we key inside the rig. We keep the nasty stuff inside the rig. That thing there is something I got um, AliExpress in his um, 40 fees, and it's a in inverter, uh, DC uh, to AC um, inverter. So it takes my 12 volt shack supply and outputs a um, 220 volts AC which I then, on this board here, it's the power supply, it's just a full wave bridge rectifier, which is then filtered with these uh, capacitors, they're high voltage capacitors that I got out of an old uh, modem, uh, switch mode supply for a modem. So switch mode supplies for high voltage capacitors are quite handy. We've got a few terminal strips and whatnot to, uh, to give us places we can anchor wiring for the actual circuit. And this rig itself is, uh, uh, I guess it's a, a, a knockoff of the Amico, except for the power supply stuff here. Whiskey Uniform 2 uh, Delta, I think it is. Um, Mike, a Microwave 1 YouTube channel, put me onto this idea of using this inverter as a supply. Because one of the bottlenecks of creating a tube rig is quite often the fact that um, the transformers are difficult to obtain, they're expensive, you've really got to keep your eye out for them. And this is a way around that bottleneck. So in this rig, we've got two ways around bottlenecks that can appear, or three really. The 6V6 is a Chinese tube that's readily obtainable on AliExpress. And as I've proven in this design, it works. The 2.5 milli Henry chokes, which are also becoming harder and harder to find more and more expensive. On my channel, you can watch the 2.5 milli Henry choke winding video, find out all about that. That's another bottleneck. And then the final bottleneck to this um, tube chuck plate is getting a supply for your plate, a high um, voltage DC supply. Now, 
I'm going to tell you straight up, um, if you have never worked with high voltages and you um, don't know much about uh, uh, electronics and uh, electrical systems, you need to proceed with a huge amount of caution. Find someone that knows what they're doing. Do your due diligence. I'm not saying, hey, follow me. This is exactly how to do it. I'm sure there'll be plenty of people that will look at this wiring and whatnot and how it's done and say, good luck. Nice knowing you. <laughs> anyway, so that is the rig thus far. It uh, has QSO'd and it will QSO again very shortly, hopefully on a variable VFO. Uh, that's the, uh, the next plan for it. But I'm just having an absolute hoot playing with this technology. It's opened up a new avenue of interest for me uh, via tube um, technology and all that good stuff. So that's it, the Renaissance rig to this point in time. Oh, I nearly forgot to mention, at the back here we've got two BNCs, one for the, uh, the transmitter and one for the receiver. We've also got an earth lug at the back here and the DC in. Now, across the receiver uh, BNC, I put back-to-back -back diodes and that's just a way of making sure that if we do get any uh, larger um, signal type voltages happening they're not blasting into the front end of the receiver they're being shorted to earth so that's a nice sort of simple down dirty way of protecting your RF amplifier in your receiver now I've done that in my uh, magic antenna box as well when I put my SDR switch in there so that's another modification that I nearly forgot to tell you about but uh, loving, absolutely loving this transmitter. Now, I've also taken some of these extra bits that I had, little offcuts, to uh, reinforce these shells because the shells were sagging very, very badly. Uh, they're not perfectly rigid now, but uh, they were like very uh, concave. <laughs> so we've used the bits and pieces to good effect to try and make things uh, a little bit more durable. So that's another benefit of uh, that material that was uh, provided free of charge. Thank you for sticking around right to the end of the video. Hopefully when I return or in the next video, we will have a VFO for this tube rig that is working. And uh, before I leave, I may even get uh, that crystal grinding video done. Uh, hopefully. 7-3 and we will see you in the next episode of The Art of Engineering.